What's good, y'all? It's your boy Jay Brock. Let's clap it up for LA. You know what I'm saying? I'm right here with the homie Kyle Banks. Yes, sir. He's an R&B artist out of West L.A. Signed with Red Bull. Just dropped his Uncommon EP with Blue Bus Clan, Bino Rado, Kaylin Frill Frill, K-Camp, and Damar Jackson. And in my opinion, Kyle Banks is a guy who can really, really sing. Make sure y'all tap in with Kyle Banks and everything he's got going. And let's get into this good game. Now, you know what I'm saying? Childhood, uh, heavily influenced by Jaheem and Michael Jackson. Uh, what are some of the things that that you was able to pick up from them and apply to your own game? Um, a lot of, a lot of, well, Michael Jackson and Jaheim are very emotional for me. They put a lot of emotion in their music, and that's what I like to pride myself and try to do. You know what I'm saying? I feel a lot of their music is stories, uh, rather it be something little or big. You know what I'm saying? But it's still a message behind them. You know, they song. That's right. That's right. Now, um. Y'all might not know, but Kyle Banks was rocking the Mohawk in high school, Santa Monica High. He's six one, you know. What I'm saying he might not look like he's six, six one, one, but he's six one. You know, what I'm saying 160 pounds, shooting guard, playing number ten. Uh, y'all would go 29 and seven that year, that your senior year, number one in the Ocean League. Yes. Um, when you playing that year, you know, what I'm saying you going through things, but you continue to be playing. So, what was it like being a part of a team like that and going as far as y'all went? Um. Well, we 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 we. I'm sorry. We uh, we went to CI, uh, CIF. We won CIF that year. Mm-hmm. Ended up going to state. Mm-hmm. That we they lost the state. I didn't even go to state with them that year. Yeah. You know, I kicked off the team type, but yeah. you know it dealing is. With it is. Dealing with the coach. Is. Yeah, you know how politics is. Right now, shout out to DJ T.O. because y'all was in clash. Y'all did my clash, motherfucking make brother, it, man. Making making uh, DJ T.O. on the beats. Yeah. And then you doing the singing. How often was y'all getting down like that, man? Did y'all ever get in trouble in class for that? Well, like I said, we we <laughs> I ain't gonna put my boy business, but I ain't passed that class. You know, so <laughs> we did some other shit. We was in there making beats and singing, so I said, big full circle. Like I was shedding a tear, man, because it's just like, nigga, we you was making beats, we was doing all kind of shit in math. Yeah. Years later, we had we had our first festival. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Facts. Going crazy, born up, so. Born up, born up. Um, you would open up for for us. Love is Hell tour. Um, and if you don't know who Four is, uh, he has a song, Cupid's Curse, with Kehlani, Stars in the Sky, Janae Aiko. Uh, what was it like getting that opportunity of being able to open up? Uh, shout out Four, man. That was like my first big show ever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I think the first show was in. Um, man, what was it? Was it San, uh, Sacramento. Sacramento. Okay. I think the first one was in Sacramento, mm-hmm. and um, I just remember like this shit is crazy. It's a lot of people here. Um, it was my first time really performing them song. Like, it's a, matter of fact, the song I was performing wasn't even out yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I didn't even know how it was gonna sound. Mix, master it, but it came out really good, man. And it was a learning experience. I took it in. I loved it. And now it's like kind of moments like, damn, it made me hungry. Like I really want to do this. Mm-hmm. I want to perform. Mm-hmm. I want to have my own show. I want to have my own tour. You know. Mm-hmm. So. Could you can could you compare the feeling that you get from um, performing on stage to playing basketball? And I'm asking that because a lot of a lot of athletes, once they're done with the game, you're kind of looking for what's going to give you mm-hmm. that feeling again. So was that something like that? Yeah, because it's more so it's just like, I mean, you practice like a basketball. You practice, for sure. practice for the moment. For but sure. at the end of the day, you don't know what's going to happen. You, mm-hmm. you, you praying it's the best outcome. You know, you praying you hit all your notes. You praying, and like me personally, I don't sing with a track on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I think I did at the festival, but for the most part, I don't sing with a track on at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like, if I mess up, if I was to mess up, you're going to hear it. Mm-hmm. There's no track carrying me. It's no, it's nothing. It's really just me, the band, most of the time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, shout out Black Collar. Shout out Black Collar, man. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yeah, it's nerve-wracking sometimes. Like, damn, I, but then again, it's just that inside me is the shit that, it's exciting to me, too. Mm-hmm. Knowing that if I fuck up, it's going to really fuck up, like, it's really just me holding this shit up. So it's like, damn, I, am I gonna do it? You know, yeah, it's a game yeah, to me sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But I love it. I love the feeling. I love. I love. Um, I love the excitement. Mm-hmm. And same thing with basketball. I, I love. I love not knowing what's gonna happen, but I ha- have an idea what's gonna happen. But at the end of the day, you don't know, yeah. and that's no, exciting that's, to me. That's you know fact. what I'm saying? That's a fact. So, 
Yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. And I, I mean, I could only imagine as as like a singer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You especially not doing it with the vocals playing, and mm. you out there just singing by yourself. I could imagine the nerves. Mm. So, what are the nerves like? And have you ever caught yourself like missing a note? You just kind of like, oh, all right, let me let me just keep performing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but I'd be so smooth with you wouldn't yeah, even know. Yeah, like I, even know. I yeah. might fuck up on the word, mm-hmm. replace the word, mm-hmm. or I might low-key forgot the next line, but I'm gonna repeat the line, act like I meant to say it again. Mm-hmm. But it's it, you know, it's it's tricks. So shout out to my boy Dom and my brother, man. He taught me a lot of shit, man. Mm-hmm. Um like certain tricks to do, uh if you if if you don't got if you're not comfortable with a, you know, a no, you can bring it down a little bit, gather some strength and then go up. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of shit, it's tricks, but mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 definitely nerve wracking up there, you know. Especially if you know you fucked up, it's like, oh shit, I wonder if somebody caught it. But so what? I gotta keep going. You just gotta keep going yeah. forward, and that's like really a skill because, you know, have you ever choked? Have you ever like messed up and then was just like, oh, I messed Hell up? No. Like, nah, nah. Okay, okay. Well, that's good because nah. you got some people who actually choke. Yeah. Like, somebody told me, somebody told me they choked, bro. And it was it's the craziest thing because like I was saying, a lot of people don't even notice the mistakes you mm-hmm. made. So to be able to cover it up and just keep going, that's a beautiful thing. Do you spend too much time even thinking about that though when it happens? Nah. Okay. Because I know I'm thinking about what worry I'm about to replace it with. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. nah. I just nah, hell no. Nah. Like I if I was a ch- like if I was a mess up, I might just go to the next song. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna I'm not gonna mm-hmm. sit there and talk about it, you mm-hmm. know. So Yeah. I feel that. No, I mean, and that's all a part of the game. You got to be able to adapt like that. Uh, I, you know what I'm saying? In any circumstance. Now, January 2019, uh, you would, J. Cole would host, J. Cole and Dreamville would host the um, the rap camp in Atlanta for mm. 10 days. Um, they sent invitations out, and that was, a, that was a really big deal. So you would actually be there. You made a couple of records. You did not make the album, but you got the experience. I got the experience. So, I mean, when, when you think about, when you think about, getting that experience, you know, how grateful were you just to get the experience at all? Because, you know, some people, because they didn't make the album, they might look at it like, oh, well, this, I just wasted my time. Mm-hmm. So how grateful were you just for that experience alone? I mean, it's extremely grateful. It was a, like you said, it was a learning experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I took what I, what I learned there, brought it back here overnight, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, it was crazy, and all these dope-ass artists from around the world mm-hmm. working. 24 hours a day, like I see a nigga wake up four in the morning and go work for. I I even did a song like five in the morning, it just nonstop working. working. Yeah. And it was beautiful, you know, it was a great thing. And what was the energy like? Amazing. It was like just vibes on vibes, talented people. And that's the first time I realized I really love music, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because that was my thing with basketball. I always liked it, but I didn't love it. And I, I realized I didn't love it when I went to school in, in Ohio. That's all we did was basketball. And I was like, man, this shit is annoying. Like, mm. God damn. Mm. And then when I'm out here, it was like, I, I, I didn't want to go to sleep. Because mm. I could think about it. Like, I wonder what song I'm going to make tomorrow. Mm. Or I wonder what beat, what cadence I can make. So, again, that was a shout out to uh, Dreamville, man, for allowing me to come there, man. It was it was amazing. It, mm. And then I remember me, he asked me, do I want to come? Mm. I was like, hell yeah. Mm. You know, hell yeah. You got to take advantage of that opportunity. And that's a crazy thing that you said, you know. When you realize you got annoyed with something, and mm-hmm. I feel like, especially when the money's not involved, mm-hmm, you exactly. you gotta feel like, oh, I can't wait to get back out there when ain't no money involved. Mm-hmm. You gotta feel like that, even though you know those days where maybe you don't feel like working a day, but you know at the end of the day, if I go put in this work, I'm gonna feel good because I did it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's extremely important, and that's a, that's a, that's a big thing right there. Um, so at one point you said you ran into J Cole at the Staples Center, right? Yeah, that was the first time I met him. Okay, that was the first time you met yeah. him. And uh, explain that situation again, because I feel like that was, you know, it, it went full circle mm-hmm. for you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I remember I was doing a couple songs, mm. and uh, I remember Mies told me, he was like, oh, I'm going to send you to Cole. I'm like, you going to send to who? Mm. You know what I'm saying? You going to send to Cole? Mm. That's crazy. All right, bet. So he sent the song. He said Cole had some feedback. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I guess Cole had told him a song he really liked. Mm-hmm. And like, I guess Cole went to meet, you know, went to our, who I am in person. Mm-hmm. And it was performing at the Stable Center. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember I went backstage, I went with uh, Mies, and I met him, you know, and it was like a crazy moment. It was like, because I remember when I first heard a, heard a call, I, don't, I forgot, I don't want to say the uh, table or I, I, I what it was called, but I remember it was like, it was, it was a song called, um, I forgot what the song was called. Oh, Lights Please, I think. Like, mm-hmm. Lights Please, Lights Please, mm-hmm. Turn Out the Light. I think that's what it's called, but I remember 
I didn't know who that was. And that's when LimeWire was cool. I remember I downloaded on oh, LimeWire. LimeWire was going what? up in the days, man. And I was like, this song, I used to listen to that song every day. Yeah. Because at the time, I was going through a lot of stuff with basketball, man. Mm-hmm. And So what, 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 what was you going through with basketball? It's just like I said, my coach was hating on me. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I played the basketball my whole life, mm-hmm. and it's like... It's abruptly ended. It was, it was the first time I've ever been in a position where somebody can really control the outcome. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. AAU, I could go to another team. But I never had that, I never had that problem. AAU, I played, you know, I was probably one of the best on the team, high, middle school. And even high school, I was one of the best on the team. It was just, it was, a, the, it was a time in my life where, you know what I'm saying, I didn't have control. Mm-hmm. And that was just really, like, scaring that me. That was a problem, yeah. yeah. This is the time I didn't know what music, I mean, I didn't know the music lanes yet. Mm-hmm. So my whole thing was, I'm going to get a scholarship, I'm going to go to college. Probably go to the league, you know, overseas something, but I'm gonna make money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And here this man is stopping that. Yeah. So I was, you know, I was very damn near. I'm not gonna lie. I was very, you know, um, depressed. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I was very depressed. Okay, so that's a beautiful thing that you admit that because you know, like that that whole crossover thing yeah. when it's time to be done with the sport and it's time to really jump into real life. Yeah. A lot of athletes are depressed yeah. and they are like, "What am I gonna do with myself?" You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So. That's a beautiful thing to even admit that. Now, when you realizing that you're depressed in the midst of this, did that make it a little easier for you to just, like, be done with it? Um, not really. At the time, it was like, uh, it was a constant day. It was constant. Mm-hmm. Where I practice, we went to boot, the game come, we went play. And then I, I remember it, I had, like, a crazy year of going, my junior year going, that's my senior year, like, A, you that's our travel ball. Mm-hmm. It's killing, you know what I'm saying? College attentions, everything. Got back to school, my coach was like, he had to play me. You know, too many coaches were calling by me. <clears throat> so I was starting, doing great, you know what I'm saying? And then some weird injury, like, the, the weirdest shit be, was happening, so I felt like God always wanted me to do music, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I got a contusion, nigga had knee me mm-hmm. in my quad. Mm, and right, man, I know that hurt. Oh you know what I'm saying? Right God. before the season. Yeah. And usually, and those injuries take about six to, like, eight weeks, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, two months. Mm-hmm. So I was out for, like, two months. And I really still didn't get my full, because I, I was a high flock and dunk. I could do everything. Mm. But it was a sit on my quad. I couldn't really jump that high, high, high mm. as, I, you know, as I normally would. But, yeah, it, it, that had me very depressed. You know what I'm saying? That was my senior year, mm. injured. And then when I got back in here, my coach on that weird shit again, not playing me. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it was very depressing. And then I, I didn't even graduate high school. I'm not, man, I didn't graduate high school because of that shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I said, fuck school. But now, then I saw, you see, it took a real turn. Yeah, no, I definitely it fucked me up a little bit. Yeah. And then I went to uh, school in Ohio for some prep shit. And then, like I said, I got back out here, and I just said, you know what? That's when the music shit happened, but yeah. I didn't know it was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, all my life was basketball, 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 basketball. Here go a nigga taking that away from me. It's like, damn. Did you feel like a failure at all in the midst of that? Yeah, I felt like... I, it's just the point, and I know what I'm going to do now. It, that, that's one of the scariest things I feel like a lot of people deal with in life is just the not knowing. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I don't feel like I had no options, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, and, you know, God opened the music door for me. But when I, before I knew about yeah, I was, I just didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. You know, I, and I knew I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to go to a JC, but at the time I was like, you know, I, I might. Because even when I was doing music, I thought I probably going to go to a JC, you know what I'm saying, get back to the real, you know. The real world, but um, I really didn't want to go there. I didn't want to go to school. A lot I, of people don't want to go to a JUCO. Yeah. Now I know a JUCO is different as far as basketball. Yeah. But I feel like JUCO, as far as football, kind of people are kind of understanding a little more. Yeah, yeah. Around. So why did you feel like you didn't want to go to a JUCO? I just didn't want to be that nigga that gray shirt, that red shirt. You that know what I'm saying? At, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Okay. Be the nigga that don't leave okay. college till he's like 28, 27, yeah. Yeah. still chasing the dream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I told one of my partners, you know, the same thing, like one of my best, best friends. And this can't, it's crazy. He, he's a high position now. We had a whole talk about basketball one day. I just said, I feel like, we, me personally, I'm done with it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be no old, you know, that nigga chasing the dream at 27, mm. 28, 26. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I'm not saying people who do that is bad. I just didn't want to be that nigga for me. Mm-hmm. As uh, far as basketball? Yeah, I just wanted to be. I, that, that's not what I wanted to do, you know? Yeah. And he said, he thought about it, the same thing. And we both, like, you know, Officially quit it, you know what I'm saying? Mm, that's, Officially that's, quit it. That, that, you know that's, you know that's a thing because some people can't get over the sport. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, you people get to playing semi-pro, more power to you. 
but you didn't want to end up. Like I didn't want to end. I didn't want to be like that. But how many times do you step out on the, on the court now? And hoop oh and yeah, come on. I, I, come on. I, I go to LA Fitness. I yeah. hoop. I hoop with, uh, shout out my nigga Lanzi. We invite niggas yeah. to hoop and shit. Nah, we. I still get it in though. But yeah. as far as serious with the jersey and referee, yeah. he uh, said I ain't, I ain't doing the whistles. Uh, I ain't doing the whistles. I, that. I, <laughs> I feel that. I, I feel that. that. So I mean, it's it's a total mind shift because you know now you got the music situation where so many people just don't know, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it can drive them crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, when you think about even even your style of music, how much of the style of basketball have you been able to convert into the boot? Uh, just competitive. Mm. Um, Facts. Got being be. competitive with myself, other mm. people, mm. but health keeping it healthy. Um, mm. even in basketball, I never let, allow myself to cheat drills. You know, so in music, a lot of times I don't allow myself to cheat sessions. That's a big one. That's a big one. I make even if I don't want to, I finish songs. Mm. Just the fact that I finish it, that may not even be a nigga song. I, don't even, I fuck with you like that, but it just I don't want to be half ass on it. You know, because mm. mm. sometimes I'll take what I said on that song, and put on the next song, cause it just fits better. You know, so mm. yeah, just being competitive. You know. Mm. That's right. I feel that that's a big one. Make sure y'all be competitive, man. Now, 2020, you would drop green light. And in the pandemic, I mean, you got Bean Overdo, TJ3K, DeBoer, Kaz, Kaden For Real For Real. Now, what people may not know is that song popping with Kaden For Real For Real and Kaz was something that you would actually make in 2019, mm -hmm. right? And so you had to double back and use this. Now, see, this is the thing about you having the songs in the vault. Do you think it's something else you got in the vault that you'll be able to, like, pull out and be like, okay, I need you on this song, and it's going to blow right now? Yeah. Uh, that's well, that's really crazy, bro. It's funny with that song. We was going, like I said, we made so many songs. We had, again, we were going through the blueprint. That song didn't fit the blueprint at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh I want my at the time the blueprint was more so to go to like real real like you know singing you know like wind it down type music you know like emotional music you know just Bryson Tiller lane, mm -hmm. but I felt like you know we had a meeting like we was like you know what let's show the versatility you know what I'm saying let's show that we could do all everything mm -hmm. so green light was more so my like you know my what do you call it my grand opening to quote unquote L A music type shit like back you know what I'm saying back with L A type right. shit. And I got a lot of my favorite LA artists from it, you know, mm. from Dino, Kaylin, you know. Mm. And um, it turned out really good. And mm. Off of that, I got like three deals, you know what I'm saying? So that's when I was like, okay, yeah, it's go time. Man, you yeah. just hitting the lotto every time it's you, go time. you put something down. It's go time. Okay, so during the pandemic, you say things are just happening. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just crazy. It's really not usual. Mm -hmm. uh, you would have a conversation with moms, and moms would tell you that you are uncommon. Mm -hmm. And you would also credit moms with being your biggest, your greatest inspiration mm -hmm. because you said she taught you what strength is. Now, Uncommon, if you don't know, that's the <clears> name <throat> of his, his latest EP. And you bring that around. You said Uncommon was a word that just stuck. It, it was just something stuck. I just, I, I couldn't let it go. Now, when you, when you credit moms with being your greatest inspiration, the strength, mm -hmm. what type of situation have you seen moms in that, that showed you this is what strength is? Uh, you know, when I was younger, my mom had cancer and shit, you feel okay. me? So, okay. but when she had cancer, you know, she never really was, you know, hard on herself, never made excuses, none of that. Mm -hmm. And, it's, I mean, a lot of times I would just look at it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, you really still, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, if you should fuck with my head a little bit, Cause, Cause I was like, is she faking this shit? Like, is she trying mm -hmm. to look strong? Mm -hmm. But not, you know what I'm saying? My mom, you know, she beat it. You know, thank God. But even during the whole time, you know, she she constantly had, I mean, she constantly was doing things. You know what I'm saying? Never took a day off, still. I mean, she, I remember she lost her hair. I was, man, I was real emotional that day. And it was, she almost made me feel bad for crying. Like, why are you crying? You know what I'm saying? So that was like the first time I ever seen strength. You know what I'm saying? So. From then on, again, you know, from, from even till now, I always tell you, strongest woman I know, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how I seen it. And I remember we was talking one day on the couch, and she was telling me, um, this, this, she made me think, like, a lot of things I, in my life, how I even got here, a lot of things I've done, the ways I cook, the routes I cook, was uncommon, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. How I did music was uncommon. How, how, how I didn't graduate high school was uncommon, you know? How I stumbled across, you know, Jaheem albums was just uncommon, you know what I'm saying? It's just a, a lot of things, like a lot of other stuff too, but it's just uncommon, you know what I'm saying? And that word, like you said, it just, it just stuck with me. It stuck, yeah. it, it stuck with me for 
Because I always was trying to find a word, but I couldn't find a word, but that was the perfect that word. That was the perfect word. It just, it, it just falls on you Instant. sometimes. It's too. like that's the word I was and looking for. That's how for. God worked, though. That's how God worked. It just falls on you. So, you know, when moms overcomes cancer, you know, how mm. much of a how much was a, a weight off your shoulders uh, was that? It was a lot. Um, I remember, too, the time it happened. I was, I was in 10th grade. I had broke my, uh, my patella. You, you got a lot of injuries. Yeah, man. That's for basketball, man. Yeah. Some weird shit. <laughs> no, I, remember, I was mad. I was, yeah. I was very angry yeah. at the world at the time. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, I started to have cancer. And it's like, I couldn't do it. I, you know, I couldn't help around. Because mm-hmm. uh, I had a I had a uh, broken leg and shit. You know what I'm saying? I had, that was one of the, probably the most worst time of my life. You know what I'm saying? Mm, broken leg. Goodness gracious, bro. How painful was these injuries? What was you... I mean, goodness. Yeah, no. Nah, uh... It's crazy how it happened. It was weird. It was uncommon. I jumped and it just popped. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Didn't do nothing. Just literally jumped on my leg and just popped mm. in the middle of a game. You just fell out like ah. Right, man. And I was more so nervous. Everybody was looking at it and screaming. So I was like, oh shit. Yeah, like I don't even want to see that. It's one of the ones you just want to look up. You don't want to see yeah, it. Yeah, like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't do what I wanted to do. You know, so I couldn't help out how I wanted to help out. I could mm. barely walk my damn self. Yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, so you, so both of y'all are going through it. Yeah, but I was more so just mad because I couldn't help. Mm-hmm. Fuck the injury, fuck the leg. You know what I'm saying? It was, I could help my mom. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, what I'm saying I had it. That was, it touched my face. I'm not gonna. That was one time. Every time, one and only time, it touched my face. You know. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you have to battle with your feelings and, and that can affect a whole lot of stuff even outside the home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, that's what a lot of people be going through. Um, but man, shout out to moms, man. You know what I'm saying? Much love to moms. Shout out to Overcoming Cancer. Um, February 24th, 2021, Rose Crans Vic and Gina Views will give you a shot on them on No Jumper on Mad Lately. Uh, what was that? Yeah, they mess with it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? On No Jumper. So when you would see that, you know, how would that make you feel? It was like, damn, people fucking with me. Yeah. Um, and what's your relationship like with Rosecrans? Oh, uh, my nigga, man, I love them niggas. Shout out to the homies, yeah. I love, I love, I love, I love them niggas, man. Rose, Rosecrans and Ari was like one of the first, like, blogs I can remember that really fuck with me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, riding up with me when I was, I mean, nobody knew the fuck I was type shit. Mm-hmm. So I always respect that, you know, I keep that in my heart for sure. Yeah, shout out Rosecrans, yeah. But no, nah, I was loved. I remember I was like, damn, I think I was in Atlanta when I first seen it. And I was like, this shit hard. Like, people, like, niggas fuck with us. Yeah. You know, but it's keep going. Yeah. Keep facts, going. facts, facts, facts. What was the first time you would actually talk to Rose Crans, Vic? What were some of the things they talked about? I don't remember the first time. I think I think maybe when he was at Dash in Hollywood, maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, but I remember he was, he was just trying to see who I was. Yeah. I was, you know, I'm telling him, oh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm meeting, meeting Louis New Aria. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I'm going to tap in. He, niggas say that and don't, but he really did. Yeah. You know, he checked yeah. in. Wrote, wrote shit on me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was love. So what, okay, we speak about people saying they're going to tap in and they don't. Mm-hmm. You know, that's another thing that goes on. Yeah, that's people life. People may not see, you feel what I'm saying? But initially when you deal with that, you know, uh, the, you know, how do you take that? You know what I'm saying? And not take it in a negative way, but just take it like, okay, uh, whatever, I'm just going to keep going. I mean, you just can't take shit personal, man. Yeah. And, I, and I tell some of my homies that too, uh, Especially in this industry, you can't take shit personal. Facts. You can't, man. In, in life, but especially in this industry. Because that'll take you out the game. If you, man, if I, man, I'm telling you, bro, so many things I say, oh, we got to work. All right, yeah, I'm tapping in. Don't, don't tap in. Mm-hmm. Or a nigga tell you, uh, he going to check you out, don't check you out. Niggas ain't going to do this. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, all it's part of the game, game man. It's, you know? it's to the point where I just don't yeah. even believe it. I'm like, all right, yeah, 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 all right, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, facts. yeah all right, nigga. I mean, you just got to take it with a grain Yeah, all right, nigga. Like, yeah. You feel me? But. Yeah. But it make you appreciate the yeah. ones that actually do that. Yeah, that. yeah, of course. So it's just like you know, like I said, when Rose Crunch actually checked in, it was like, oh shit. Well, how many times have have people told you that, and then you did something big? They, you know, okay, so they, they I'm gonna tap in, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't tap in. You mm-hmm. do something big, all of a sudden, I'm, what's up, bro? Uh, hey, we yeah. need to do something. How many times you went through that? Yeah, man, I ain't gonna say no that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I just posted I was about to perform at the Dreamville. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. when you get back, uh, uh, we gonna do that. Uh, it, or we we gonna have you come do this this show da 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 da. So what's your response to that though? I bet. Or cool. Yeah. Or I just 
I'm not even read it. Like, nigga, I, 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 I won't even respond. It's like, nigga. It's like, I tried to tap in. He said that yesterday. shit two times, yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, fool, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, so, yeah, but that's, a, that's a gem, you know, especially in this industry. You, you can't take things personal, mm-hmm. man, because a lot of the time, some people just can't <clears> tap in with you because they too busy. Too busy. Sometimes, it's, it, it, you know, it's just whatever the case is. Because especially now, like, when you get to being around these people, you understand people are constantly working. Exactly. I, I know, like, Rosecrans, Vic be getting a million messages yeah. at once. Shout out Cali, she shot. They be, you know what I'm they saying? They doing so, their shit. Yeah, so it, it, it's, the, the higher you get into this game, the more work you're doing it. You be out in the studio at 4 o'clock in the morning on a regular basis, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, if you're ready for this. Like, you know what I'm saying, people yeah. say they are. Now, um, you were signed a Red Bull August 27, 2021. Uh, you would make the announcement with a picture captioned, never had no handouts. Mm-hmm. Went from recording and closets, as we talked about, closets and garages, to million-dollar studios. God is the greatest. Shit wasn't easy, but I never asked for it to be. So when you get to write that caption, because this is this is really a, a moment where you cross over. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't even get to experience that. So when you make this caption and, and you cross over in the game as such, what how, how accomplished do you feel? And it's, it's like like I said, it's just like I don't have no we didn't have no big bros in this game, mm-hmm. you feel me, as far as a nigga that can fund us, everything. Oh, hey, we need this, can you fund this? So or, you got to struggle in that aspect. You feel me? So it just came all of us together and put our money together. I mean, we were living, I remember we saw, we called the Midi Mansion. We used to live, and we were all, we all slept on the couch. You know what I'm saying? You slept on this couch, this couch, this couch, this couch, this couch, this couch. And we all had, every day, like I said, we had a blueprint. How are we going to do this shit? How are we going to do this? How much money are you going to bring? How much money can you bring? How much money can you bring? And it's like, it's hard telling a nigga to spend money on you. You know what I'm saying? No, he don't got it like that unless he really believe in you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And to see, like I said, my niggas, I know they ain't millionaires. Niggas ain't at the time niggas didn't have probably fifty thousand. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But to come up with, okay, you got five hundred, you got five hundred, we got fifty hundred for the video, you know what I'm saying? And they're not even in the video. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just like again, we didn't have no handouts, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes we spend money, like I at the time we spent almost like three thousand dollars on the video, I ain't never dropped. Ain't never oh two videos that never dropped. Cause, talk about that. You know bro. what I'm saying? Sometimes, like, like I say, yeah. that's what it goes to say. Like you know, yeah. we would pray we'll go in the right, but sometimes it didn't go in the best route. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we took it up. You know, chin up, chest out. You know, my fault. Chin high, chest out. You know? <laughs> and yeah. kept it moving. Yeah, you know, yeah, kept yeah. it moving. Couldn't yeah. sit back on the loss. Yeah. But like, like I say, it, it was a, God is the greatest. You know, because throughout yeah. all that, we kept. You know the same mindset. We gonna, we gonna do it though. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. We took a loss. We took the money. We really don't got at the mm-hmm. time three thousand dollars back Three-tans, then. Man, nigga, man. that was like thirty thousand, bro. That's a lot of bread. You know bro. what I'm saying? To, 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 to give away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ran out of car. Running out the uh, the um, what was that play? Was the, the car? The um, the uh, venue, mm-hmm. the models, mm-hmm. the cameraman, mm-hmm. all for this shit not to drop. Why didn't it drop? It just didn't fit. So it was like a decision y'all made. It was a decision we made that as, you know what I'm saying, quote unquote, as the best. It was one of the hard decisions. But we all felt like it was right, you know what I'm saying? The song didn't go to where we were heading to. Okay, okay. It didn't show progression. It did. It's just a song that had a great, crazy video. Videos were amazing. Mm-hmm. If, if I could change the lyrics to make my lips move on a different, on a different song, I would have did that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we, we can't. So... Okay. We decided, you know, we just going to take, again, just take this loss. Take that loss. That's a part of the keep game, it moving. Though. You got to chunk the losses up. Chunk the game. losses up. Yeah. Because now, niggas got budgets and shit. $3,000. Yeah. I, I wish the video was $3,000 now. You know, <laughs> I wish it was that yeah. low, you feel me? But, yeah. um, again, like I said, it's just progression. Mm-hmm. And when I wrote that caption, when I, when I it was just like a, like kind of like a, like a breath. I know I got to okay. keep going. Yeah. I know Fresh I got to. But this is this is I can sit back for one second at least you yeah. feel me, yeah. and just to look back what we done you know what I'm saying how we met all the work we put in because Guinness wasn't overnight mm. and a lot of times, I mean even me, you you drop a song you expect that home run mm. oh this song this is gonna be the one to take okay. me to yeah, yeah, million yeah, yeah. this is gonna be sure. the one yeah and it don't yeah but you gotta understand that it's okay you gotta all right it's cool I'm gonna go back to the drawing board or I'm but gonna keep I'm gonna keep going yeah because you you feel feelings I'm feeling behind it. that though. yeah you know what I'm saying and it. because. 
I, I mean, you know, you see the videos I put out. I want all of them to do a hundred likes or whatever, but yeah. they don't. They you know don't. what I'm saying? But it's a part of the game. You, you can't stop working. You can't. Because of that. I mean, you know, we saw it out and put out. Oh, this is gonna be the one. Yeah. This is gonna be the one. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be the one. Yeah. Oh, no, this one. Yeah. And they don't. But at the same time, I feel like I'm getting closer. Yeah. And what you end up doing is you build up a great body of work. Mm-hmm. So when that one do pop, mm-hmm. you got thirty songs mm-hmm. that people can go back to. Mm-hmm. They said you got that one song that pop, but you ain't got no other song so niggas can listen to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, cool, okay. So you got to find blessings and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It might be that 50 song that pop, but at the same time, I got 49 songs yeah. that's just as, if not better, right. that you can listen to. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So and somebody's hearing that. Yeah. You know that song, that song that you expecting to pop, somebody heard it. Somebody gonna hear you it. You feel what I'm saying? Cause I feel, I personally feel like the song Water. Come over here. Uh-huh. I feel, I feel, I feel like the song Water that you dropped. I feel like that song don't get enough of the the the, the, the like the praise it deserves. Mm-hmm. That's that song water is hard. Yeah. Oh my Pretty god, safety. especially if you got some beat in your car. Oh man, you turn that up, man. You going up for that's one of them songs right there when you was in high school, people doing some serious grinding mm-hmm. and gyrating to that. Now that, that, that water, bro. She said she what did you say? You said she got that water, water. He oh, really that nigga hit that. Crazy. <laughs> Shout out to more. Oh I me. Mean, so crazy. so okay. Now with this understanding, how, okay, so when you when you go into the booth and, and you thinking like, okay, this is a song, mm-hmm. have you kind of transitioned into just being like, okay, you know, I'm not even gonna think about that. I'm just working because when you when, when we're talking about you constantly thinking, okay, yeah, this is gonna be the song, this is gonna be the song, but the one that you don't expect be the song. Mm-hmm. So are you kind of always still doing that, or are you kind of just just nah, I'm just working? It's just working. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, again, it's just for the point. Like I feel when you start doing something long enough, you don't care about the home run. For sure, it's more so. The quality, uh, especially me, I, I just want the quality to be good. I wanted to put emotion. I want to put my all in every song, you know. Now, I was trying to get the difference between songs and music. You know, we, we try to make music. Ah, you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Any, anybody can make a song. You can make a song on the beat. You can talk five words on it. It's a song. You know what I'm saying? But music is that old shit, you know. It's the shit that's still playing from the 70s, the 60s, the 80s. That's music. You and know what I was just talking to Melly about that yesterday. I said, bro, I, I, it just this era of music is gone. Mm-hmm. So we ain't going to probably never get that back. It was just music, it, like it's just music. music. It just ain't a song. It's yeah. music. Like we got a lot of songs drop, dropping right yeah. now, but the music is what we really. That's what. That's what everybody. I feel like every artist should aim for that music. Yeah. Music. Shit, that's gonna, you know, correlate forever. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I mean, quote unquote, I mean, niggas is still. I've. I don't even think I was alive when um, uh, 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 uh Luther Vandross died. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, that's a confusion. One. I feel like. Yeah, that's but he still, you know, I still can sing his whole song. One of them, I can, uh, I can, I can sing about you two. You telling me this, if that's Luther Vandross? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can get somebody else. <laughs> <that. laughs> <laughs> you never go <laughs> back. You know what I mean? But no, no, but but that's that's really a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Drake had a song, and in that song, the dude said, um, "See, only real music is gonna last." And then uh, the other bullshit, bullshit is going to be going tomorrow. Today and gone. Yeah. Yep, yep. yeah. And, and that's how it works. So, okay, when you think about the substance, what makes what you do music? Why do you feel like what you make is music? Um, Is it a different thought process? Is is it a different, like... Yeah, I feel like... I mean, it's, you know, everybody has to, you know, teach, uh, teach his own, but... My person, me, my personal opinion, I feel like I make music because I just feel like a lot of shit I talk about is just real. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's probably you know sometimes a little bit more you know uh, sauced up, but it's still it's still you know at the end at the end of the sauce, really you know what I'm saying it's real, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I try my best to just make song or music that that I can see myself listening to a lot. You know, even when I do features. I listen, I listen, I listen, and I do it. You know what I'm saying? Cause I want to do feature anybody. We, I just won't, you know. No, what, what, what? you know, we're we not build, supposed to. We building a brand over here, yeah. so it's just like, yeah. if it don't make sense, it don't. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, again, I, I listen to a, a lot of old music. Mm-hmm. I try to hear their cadence, they they rhyme schemes. You know, why is their shit still lasting? You know, what I'm saying, what what the hell was they saying, or mm-hmm. what flow they had? You know, and, and, and a lot of time the answers be right there. You just got to really just listen. You gotta listen. You just got to listen. Yeah, facts, facts. So you know, we do that. A lot, we you know, the time we do just some old shit. Mm-hmm. Are those conversations uncomfortable to have? What? The ones where it's like, um, I don't think we should do a song. Are those conversations uncomfortable for you to have? 
Like if somebody asked me this song, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just nah, I just on some real shit. I just probably won't even. I listen to it. Probably won't play. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm not gonna. I don't want to tell you. I don't. The song's not hot. Cause we live in a generation where. And you don't know what song, what's, what music, song, music, you know, it's a lot of songs that you know, went viral, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, who am I to tell you that that's not a good song? I agree with that. Like, I'm big on, I'm not going to tell no, I'm not going to tell you what you can't do. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to tell you, because I'm not God, bro. Uh, yeah. And God is, you know what I'm saying? God mm-hmm. got the ultimate plan. Because, you know, you got people that will tell you you just can't do it, and more power to you, whoever you are, but yeah. that's not me. No, nah, I can't do it. I, can, yeah. I, I, I can't do that, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I won't do that. I, you might tell somebody, oh, that's not hot, and the song yeah. end up going crazy. You like an asshole. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You so, look dumb as a mother freaker, so, and you got to eat your words. You got to eat your words. <laughs> so me, I just want to respond. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you send me the song, if I don't reply. Yeah. It's not that I think the song is stuck. I just don't. I don't see how I'm going to fit on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I might be stupid hot. It's just, yeah. I don't want to take your money, and I do some bullshit on your song, or I do something that doesn't help your song. Mm-hmm. You know, the features should help your song, you know? Nah, I feel so that. So that's what, you know, you know mm-hmm. so that's how that go. How many times have you ever felt like somebody did that as far as your music? You send them along to the feature, but it's like, oh, this is terrible. I don't think I've experienced that yet. Okay. He said, yeah, no, no. Yeah, hopefully yeah, I, 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 hopefully I don't. But <laughs> you don't know, but no, I, I've never experienced that. Everybody that I ever did a feature that I've ever asked to be one of my songs mm-hmm. killed it. Mm-hmm. You know? So you undefeated right there. Killed it. Okay, shout out to that. Killed it. Yeah. Killed it. Yeah. Shout out to that. Is there somebody that got on your song that made you feel like you you needed to go harder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you made some adjustments to any songs after hearing somebody's from somebody? It's not even really go harder. It's just like, oh, I see what bagging is. Okay. Yeah. Or it was like I want this person on my song, so I'm gonna go hard as fuck on this song. Yeah. Like before, like for a lot of that's what that's what it's more so. It's not so that that they send some shit. I'm like that. It's just if if I know like I have a song I heard beat and I already know who I want on the song, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna act like they already on it. So I'm saying, I can't do no bullshit. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go even 10 times harder, you know? Mm-hmm. So it'll be like that to where I don't want to be the, looking like the weakling on the song, you know? Mm-hmm. It's a pride thing. It's you a pride thing. Sure so if I know, sure I know what's name going to, I know he, I want him on the song. I know he yeah. always come with it. Yeah. Yeah. I got to come stupid yeah. with it. You know but see, that's the competitive aspect. Exactly. I can't be that nigga that, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, song hard, but yeah. so-and-so is carrying that nigga. Well, see, okay, here's the thing, right? A lot of people are afraid of having somebody on their music that's going to do better than them. So mm-hmm. I'm not even going to work with you because of that. But that's how you get better. That's how you get better. And I feel like a lot of people kind of losing because of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's a part of the game. So, you know, we got to talk about on tour. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Kalen for real, for real. Um, you and, and I saw you were working with young, the young Barry Gordy. I seen oh yeah, backwood. Yeah, that's my guy. My nigga, backwood. I just met him uh, G- great a couple guy. weeks ago. At, uh, shout out my boy Cypress Marino at the first pro mm-hmm. club pop up shop. Um, I interviewed Young Bray Gord. That dude, I was like, bro, are you in shape? Are you working out? Because you be sweating. You be, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, be turned he up. Do everything. You know what I'm saying? That nigga bro, do everything. Bro, be turned up. Bro, Good. be turned up. DJ. That on me. Everything, bro. So, um, shout out to Kaden Farouk for you on tour with Kaden Farouk for real. This is your first live performance at the House of Blues in San Diego. Uh, then you will perform for the first time at the Novo, November 24th, with the Black Collar Band. Shout out Black Collar Band. You got a picture titled uh, "Used to Dream of Th- Used to Dream of Shit Like This." Mm. Went from performing in small rooms and garages to being at stages like that. Mm. So I got to ask you: Were you ever the person in the crowd at one point in time in your life? And looking up at the stage, like, man, I want to be up there. Um, not really, because when I my first show I ever went to was Usher. I was like, as a stable singer, matter of fact, I was like, uh, in fifth grade, I was playing basketball. Mm-hmm. Then I remember kind of after school was done, like when I kind of dropped out there, I went to a Dom Kennedy show at the uh, Palladium. I don't even know how to say it. I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna fuck up but it was the Palladium or some shit like that. Palladium. Palladium. <laughs> I don't know if you say Palladium. <laughs> You feel me? Yeah, Palladium. Palladium, yeah. yeah. And um, that's when I was like, oh, this shit hard. Yeah. But not, I want to do it, but it's like, I'm happy for this nigga. You know, cause I don't do, do, I don't do music. Mm-hmm. And, um, when I, but, but when I did, like I told you, when I did that show before, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I, I want this. Yeah. I want to be, I want to be big. I want to be the biggest. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And I seen, when I went to the Kalen show, that top, that, my, well, that tour topped off the biggest place I performed, obviously. And I was like, this is amazing. And shout out to Kaylee, man. Great guy, man. That nigga, one of the greatest, like, 
He one of the genuinest niggas I ever met. You know what I'm saying? Great guy. You know what I'm saying? It's all love from his camp to our camp. They ain't show no hate, no bullshit. It was all love. You know. Shout out my nigga uh, Hustle Man too. You feel me? I mean, I nigga been a my nigga for a minute. You know what I'm saying? One of the big bros for a minute. You know what I'm saying? So to be on tour with him and his camp and Kaylin, it was just great. You know what I'm saying? And um. Again, the, the experience was just amazing, you know, from forming city to city almost every day, mm-hmm. seeing new faces. Seeing, mm-hmm. And to me, like I said, when you're a new artist, it's fun because every night you got something to prove. Mm-hmm. For sure. So my mm-hmm. instead of being, you know, quote unquote, like one of the big niggas on there that everybody knew, mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm, okay, cool, I'm trying to win these niggas over tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to, I'm trying to win niggas over tonight. Right. I'm trying to do that. And especially being an opener, people may not be aware of who you are. Mm-hmm. So the whole time, they looking at you like, okay, what is he bringing? How many times have you stepped out? Uh, okay, because they may not know who you are because you're opening. So how many times have you stepped out there, the crowd probably really wasn't feeling it in the beginning, and then towards the end of your Oh, yeah, almost every night, because niggas be more spot. Who is this? Mm-hmm. Bitches might fuck me, like, you know, he handsome, whatever the case is. Niggas looking like, what the fuck is this nigga, bro? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then by the third song, I see heads rocking, clapping. Mm-hmm. Fourth song, we, you know, it's a vibe now, you feel me? And I love that. I love that feeling This okay, are we going to shake these niggas? Because I'm not going to lie, it's been times we didn't have stale crowds. Mm-hmm. Not really on that tour, mm. but this in life, I've had stale crowds, niggas. Okay, so when you have a stale crowd, mm-hmm. or do, you, like, it, do you feel like it's easier for me? Let me just walk away, because they ain't feeling nothing. Nah, I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> shit, if I got a stale crowd, Worst thing I'm gonna do is not like it. I already don't fuck with a nigga. You feel me? So I'm gonna keep, keep really going. going. I might, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might start doing shit see, I would normally do. Yeah, and that's the hard part, bro. That's the part I feel like people are so afraid of. Oh, yeah, but man. you gotta go through that. I remember I heard Nipsey say he he had crowds. I don't know. He said like maybe like two people showed up. Yeah, or something. Or seven people was in the crowd. But it's all a part of the situation. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, okay, even in that. How do you remain confident in what you're doing? I just know my purpose. You know what I'm saying? It's just part. That's where that's where the confidence and, and self worth comes in. Mm, okay. And I always sure. look at the final outcome. You know, my final outcome is me on the beach, yeah. family, yeah. life is great, wealthy. Yeah. So this one show ain't gonna stop that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's not. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people need to have just have a final outcome. Where do you, where do you see where do you see yourself when you 45, 50? How you gonna man, get there? Man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of niggas live day to day, so if you live day to day, day like that might fuck you up. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But like I said, it's been like, I, I could I, probably like one, two times with stale faces. You know what I'm saying? But I don't care. Do you usually make eye contact with the audience, yeah. or do you kind of look in? Like, I look dead at you. I look dead at you. I want to see what you about. I want to yeah. see what y'all doing. I want to yeah. see if y'all fuck with me. I want to yeah. see yeah. how. You know what I'm saying? I just want to. I want to feel the vibes. You know what I'm saying? I want. I want to be part of the crowd as well. Yeah. You know? How many times have you connected to where it was like? It just because a lot of the time it's your energy, too. Yeah. Like, so it may not even be the music, but it, yeah. what energy are you putting out? So, how many times have you connected with your audience to where it was like they they just had to, they had to go up with you because yeah. your energy was there? It, I mean, like I said, most of the tour, tour that's what the case was. Yeah. I, I felt like I don't, you know, people come out here, I don't come out here, I come out as I'm, I'm an artist, I got new music, I would love for y'all to hear it if y'all fuck with it. Amazing. If don't, if not, it's okay. Why you know? is that important? Why is that important not to come out arrogant? Because I, don't, I feel like, especially as a new artist, you don't want to come out better than everybody. You know, you come out, oh nigga, this is my shit. Y'all better like it. Okay. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you can get humbled real you, quick. Well, you know I me, mean? <laughs> and that ain't gonna it's feel like, good, bro. It's like you're bro. forcing something yeah, on somebody yeah, yeah. that yeah. they might not like your music. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I come out as this is my music. You take it or leave it. You know, if you like, but again, if you like it, amazing. Mm-hmm. This is where you can find me at more music. If not, it's okay. You know, I'll, I'll be upset in probably like five minutes. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but at the same time, I really up there. I'm all for music. You know, yeah, for sure. I like to interact with the crowd, asking y'all fucking having a good time. You know, um, again, it's just put on a show. Mm-hmm. And sometimes niggas don't put on a show. They just come in there, and do their bars, and get on. Yeah, you know facts, what I'm saying? Facts, facts, facts. It's like I like to you know, let the crowd know, like you know, I'm here for y'all. You know what I'm saying? I really want y'all to hear this shit. You know what I'm saying? I want I want y'all. I feel like and like I feel like one of the things. Um, like I said, if you're an artist out there, do you? But I feel like one of the things I don't appreciate is when you go to a show and they don't know the words. Uh huh. I, I feel like that's something I don't appreciate at all. You know, but uh, whatever the case may be, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I think that's just all a part of your show. Like, that's all oh, a yeah, part of, of the professional. Like I said, it's part, it's part of, like I said, a lot of times, places we perform, people didn't know the words. And they didn't know who I was. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But my goal is when you leave, you're going to know who you I am. You're going to go home, yeah. go look up who Kyle Banks is. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's my goal. Mm-hmm. And it, but you know, a lot of people did know the words. But for the people that didn't, 
again, I, my goal is that's not gonna happen again, you know. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, um, they gotta rock with something about you. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, they gotta rock with something about you. Cause what is it like having Young Barry Gordy by your side, going up with you, man? Man, that's then you know it's crazy. I didn't know he was that talented like that, man. Yeah. I remember I had seen he had asked me to be on one of his tapes. I sent him a song to you know put on his tape. Uh, back with Ology. Mm-hmm. Um. But I remember just hearing him on these tapes, like on every song, you know what I'm saying? Like, energy. That's Mr. Energy. You want to talk about energy right there? <laughs> that is energy yeah. right there in, yeah, in, 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 in a human form. Man, yeah. I love that nigga, man. Yeah. That nigga um, had every show going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Every show. I'm talking about every crowd fuck with him. Mm-hmm. Every crowd fuck with him. Mm-hmm. And I fed off of that. Yeah. You know, I can't have him all this hype, and I come out there like, you, you know. You come late. No, no You know way. what I'm saying? You got to so, the energy, bro. You have to. That nigga... Uh, is a, is a, again like a great as you know yeah, great a, beast. a great a great aspect to the team man yeah. great because you know and, and then not only did that nigga cook cook crazy yeah. see I haven't had none of oh that nigga yet, you yeah. know niggas talk like they cook I'm like nigga shut it <laughs> that nigga made uh, some chicken pasta in Arizona chicken pasta I can still taste he it. different and see you know one thing I saw that he su- he supported my boy Chef KB uh, uh-huh. Chef KB had a truck out there he pulled up to Chef KB truck uh-huh. this back then before I knew who he was like uh-huh. I knew his face but I didn't know exactly who he was yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta ask you how many people has has it been like that for you like you may know their face but you didn't know who they were and you like y'all y'all good now y'all can have a conversation how many people ha- has it been like that for you. Uh-huh. Really, everybody. I mean, even when I met Kaylin, I knew Kaylin was. I just mm-hmm. never met him, yeah. you know? Yeah. And when I met him, it was like, oh, like, all right, bro, I'm called. Like, you know, thank you for the song. Because he actually did the song before we even met. Yeah. Same thing with Bino. Mm-hmm. I, I was actually in the studio when he recorded it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like when you put faces to the names, it's always like, okay, cool. Like, you know, same with Blue Buck. All the people I met, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I pulled up on to do the feature or I ended up me seeing them after, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, when you can put the face to the name, it, it, it's, it's that very... He changed the whole aspect. Like, okay, like, I know who you are, and I know I'm talking to you. You know, you exist, nigga. Thing. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's the beautiful thing. Is, yeah. You know, especially here, it's kind of like you want to be careful with who you let in like that. Exactly. You know, and I noticed that because when I started coming around, I'm, hey, I'm, you know, and some people were kind of like, hold on, bro. Like, I don't really know you like that shit. You feel me? Yeah. But I had to understand it's just because you got something to lose. You got to make sure people ain't on the wrong Yeah, thing. bad vibes, people, people energy. People come around for clout. Yeah. All kind of stuff. So that's all a part of the process. Ultimately, you cannot give up. Now, we got to talk about Black Collar because one of the things at the Novo, I heard people say, yeah, Kyle, Kyle Banks had a band. They said he had a band? It was like it was like a big deal that you had a band there. Mm-hmm. Now, I heard Nipsey talk about this. Mm-hmm. He talked about being a rock star. He said, you know, I guess Pete Diddy had a conversation with Pete Diddy, and Pete Diddy kind of told him, like, if you really want to, like, be there, you need to have a band. Mm-hmm. So speak on, I, I know you like to have a band for the live feel, mm-hmm. but speak on how that even ups your game. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I love the band, man. Shout out Black Collar. Yeah. Uh, and them is my niggas, too. It's not even like yeah. these niggas is niggas that are oh, just hard. Them is my niggas. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. This crowd just didn't know they was that good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, one day I was telling EJ some shit about, I don't know what we was talking about, but he ended up saying, I got a band. Mm-hmm. Like, you got a band. Yeah. I bet. Like, we got rehearsals. Yeah. So and so bring me. Yeah. The rest was history. Yeah. I was almost like embarrassed. Like, how I didn't know this? Nigga, like, you my nigga. I ain't know it. And you know, Mel, that's my cousin type yeah. shit. You feel me? Melly Mel. All day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was more so like, nigga, you ain't tell. I mean, he always been trying to tell me about him. You know, me just, okay, you know, let me listen to him. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know there was a whole band. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, fast forward. I mean, having a band is really, I really, it, it separates from real to from fake. Facts. I feel like. It's a um, whole different feel to the show. It, yeah, because. Usually what a band is, all that live track is off. Like I was telling you earlier, mm-hmm. it's just you and the band. Mm-hmm. So them notes that you hit on the song, you better hit them. Mm-hmm. Or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You better, yeah. or sound yeah. something like them, yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the thing I love about a band is, when you have a band, there's no structure. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can literally go low, you can go high, you can tell the nigga do this and that. They gotta be versatile. It's, it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun when you can actually do it, you know what I'm saying? So... I love the band. Like I said, it's versatile. It, 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 it's no structure. It's like, it's just you up there making, you literally creating a vibe. Mm-hmm. Just music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, to me, is, that's, I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Okay, and I wanted to ask you, now, we were speaking about, now, okay, because we currently are still speaking about the Kalen tour. Mm-hmm. What's some of the things that you noticed about Kalen and his work ethic uh, that you've been able to pick up? I think a beast. You know what I'm saying? The way, I mean, to see him perform personally, Great, great, uh, great performance. 
great performer, knows how to control the crowd. Everybody loves him, you know what I'm saying? He's, music is crazy, I mean, we all know that. Um, but just seeing it, like, I, you know, to see it in person, like, oh, that's amazing, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Amazing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've seen him in the studio a couple times, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I heard, I didn't walk by, cause I don't want to inter- you know, interrupt a nigga session shit, but I've heard some shit, it's crazy, you know, nigga beast. Mm-hmm. So, he has a great work ethic as well, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Kalen. Shout out to Money Kalen. You know, one of the things um, we were talking about, Mel, shout out to Mel Rose Uncut, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, one day I had pulled up right after you, right? And uh, I just I heard the bins, and it was just, boom. I'm like, damn, this nigga got the big body bins. I didn't know who it was, right? Uh-huh. I was like, I was like, uh, I don't know, I went up in there. He was like, yeah, that nigga Kyle Bank just left. I was like, that was Kyle in the bins? He was like, yeah. I said, man, Kyle, what he doing? <laughs> it, was, it was just, it was just like I felt it, like yeah. there's somebody up in there, you know. So, to to have you ever like had to ride in a bucket in your life? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, that nigga. He said, "Have I ever had to? Uh, what you say? Ride in a bucket? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Either you just shoot on me all day, man. Uh. I keep it a bang. I don't give a fuck. It's, it's, it's no, it's, it's you know." It's, it's no uh line my game, man. No, I, big, I had a bucket for sure. I had a, yeah. um, my first car had a Jetta. wasn't okay. a bucket, though. It was 2010 and like 2012. Crashed, okay. though. Yeah, so, oh, you mastered it. Crashed it, man. Jetta crasher. Jetta crasher. <laughs> so then I had uh, a BMW. It wasn't yeah. a bucket, though. It was yeah. cool. Okay, that's not, you're not driving buckets. Nah, I'm going to show you. Okay. So then it fucked up. Somehow it fucked up to where the, it, it just sounded crazy, nigga. Yeah. They call, at the time, I was you know, I was young, dumb. It cost like two thousand to fix. So I'm like, ah, yeah, 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 two bands, two bands, a lot nigga. of money, right? <laughs> so I had to get, I, I got a Prius, mm-hmm. but one of the Priuses that wasn't new, nigga, the door when you open it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, Hub cap off, yeah, 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 yeah. And here I am, I don't got, I used to park. If I had an event right here, yeah, I would park. Maybe like two miles, three miles. Oh no, Uber and, and Uber, 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 hey, 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 Uber, Uber XL, nigga. Oh, okay, pull up, legit, come on, though. nigga. <laughs> Fake team, make it. Hey, so okay, so pulling up in the bucket, being able to drive the cars that you drive. You said people were clowning you. These how niggas right people, here. How many people? Are they got the same energy now, or what? Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. They ain't got that That's all that. Or the car I got, they can't have yeah. that energy. But see, that's a beautiful thing because you're talking about the come up. See, my thing is like they say, uh, what they say? They say, um, it's not about where you at, it's about where you're going. It's where you're going. That's what I'm saying. I would drive that piece of shit. Yeah. It made some of my hottest songs in that motherfucker, yeah. bro. I mean, off the shit. Yeah. Right. Not even right, because I don't write music. I, I freestyle it and, and it comes. You know okay, so that's what we got to talk about as a singer, mm-hmm. right? Because. I mean, when you think about a rapper, matter of fact, have you ever rapped? No, nah, not really. Nah. I mean, and no. are we gonna get like a little little rap song out of Cal Banks one day? Say maybe shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try. Shit. Okay, so as a singer, you freestyle. You don't do no writing. It's nah. Freestyle. Okay, so what's your you know what's your method? You know, as a, because we hear about how rappers do it, we don't really get to start about how singers do it. So how you step in the booth like that? I just make a melody, mm-hmm. and if I see if I see a nigga bobbing his head to the melody with no words, mm-hmm. oh. The melody hard then. Let me put some words on it now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I was always good with words though, in high school. Even in high school, I was in honors English. I even it's funny, I didn't even graduate school, but I was in honors English. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Honors English. Yeah. Eight was it uh ninth grade though, HP nine. Yeah. I was eight, uh, tenth grade too as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the homework was crazy. Like, nigga, I nigga essays every day and shit. Oh my goodness. I yeah. said, come on, man. Yeah. I, yeah, we're supposed to be smart, nigga. Why we doing all this work, man? Yeah. Yeah. So I was a regular English. But um yeah, I was always good with words. I was always good at uh Making stories and making my own, like I used to make like kind of comic, like books in my head, you know what I'm okay. saying? And um, so when it transferred to music, it was like, okay, like I get it, I can make stories to music mm-hmm. that with a beat, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like I said, I make the melody and then I try to make a story in my head and that's how it comes. Mm, okay, see, that's 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 different. I ain't never really heard that side yeah. of it, but that's cool. So, you, you have not ever put the pen to the paper? Nah, nah. And it'd be frustrating too when. When we gotta submit it to like the label and they wanna put the lyrics on the website, so I gotta go back and actually hear the song and actually type yeah, it in now. Type it in. Yeah. Uh, so do you feel I mean, do you feel or like my, you made it just your game like that though? What to uh, write? So where you just write so you can eliminate that aspect of it. Um, the reason I really don't write cause it's like I am all off vibe. Okay, okay, yeah. So okay. it if I feel, let's say I hear a song Monday, mm-hmm. I wrote to it Monday, woot woot. Mm-hmm. 
And Friday come, I'm not feeling it like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not feeling that vibe. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, I'm all in the moment as far as music. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the best music. What you feeling right now. That's a fact. You know? That's a fact. What you that's feeling right fact. now at this particular moment. You know, so that's why. Okay, I understand. I can dig that. Now, November 25th, uh, 2021, you will wrap up uh, your first tour. Um, but you said you got to do it with your best friend. Yeah. Shout out to Meeks. Like I said, shout out to Meeks because he's yeah. always been nigga. You know what I'm saying? Cody still got that on hit. Mm-hmm. Now, what is it like to be able to do this with your best friends, man, and, and to mm-hmm. be able to create those memories, especially from where y'all began? It's emotional, man. Yeah. Like I said, we were sleeping on the couch, dreaming and shit like this. Mm-hmm. Broke as hell. Mm-hmm. And to go from that to now we on a fucking tour, signed artists now, we on tour. Mm-hmm. In those days, was it ever a doubt that you would be here? Nah. Okay. And that's the thing I can honestly say. We never doubted it. Mm-hmm. it we, ne- we honestly never. It was like, well, maybe it might. No. It was always, we got to go harder. Mm-hmm. Every time. That's why I say it's great to surround yourself with people that really believe in you. Mm-hmm. So even when you slack, they not slacking. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? No, facts, facts. You got to feed off that energy. Iron. You feed off that energy. Iron sharpens iron, mm-hmm. and people got to know that. Um, because you know, usually your your immediate friends may not even be what you want. Exactly. In, in that aspect. Exactly. They friends, but they just they, you know they there, but they're not necessarily to where you can incorporate them into the business. So that's a beautiful thing that you guys were able to come together for that. Um, now December, twenty twenty one. This would be your first video out of state in Atlanta with K Kemp, which you would meet, um, uh, kind of around the time of the the Dreamville uh, camp situation. Mm-hmm. Now. Uh, for you now, this song was at one hundred ninety four thousand views on YouTube. Um, you consider Atlanta your second home. I love Atlanta. Why has Atlanta, uh, became what you could what, what you would consider your second home? Just the vibes, man. Uh, the atmosphere, mm-hmm. the people. Um, it's just genuine, mm-hmm. and the music shit out there, obviously. I mean, it's crazy, mm-hmm. but um, it's a place that I would consider. I I I would consider moving to. You know what I'm saying? Oh wow. Moving yeah. from L. See me, I can't. I don't see myself moving nowhere from nah, LA. I feel you. I mean, unless. Nah. nah I, 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 I say. I, see, I like to say I'm not moving out of L. A. Because I like to. I feel I'm gonna be able to afford to live in L. A. Now I feel like a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm not gonna live in L. A. Because I it's too hot. Mm-hmm. No, I'm gonna do what I gotta do to yeah. afford it. I love Push it too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah. And shout out to Demar Jackson because Demar Jackson is also from Atlanta as well. Mm-hmm. So K Camp working with K Camp. What's some of you know because uh, uh shout out to K Camp because he's he's a legend you yeah, know what I'm saying legend. so let's talk about a conversation that you had with K Camp what's some advice that K Camp gave you for what you do uh I don't think we really had a deep convo like that um the first time I met him was in Atlanta mm-hmm. and we were talking about sports I think you know what I'm saying okay so just regular regular yeah he's mm-hmm. a cool nigga though good guy. But it's crazy because that day I was sick as fuck though, so I, re- I really wasn't talking. After oh, the that, video I, shoot? I caught COVID that day. Oh, I didn't know I had it though. Man. You know? Oh man! I didn't know I had COVID, man. You gotta be careful with that word, man. Like, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know I had that shit. Yeah. Man. But you know it's crazy. I didn't. How you? What's the word? Nah, I wasn't. I wasn't. The doctor didn't tell me I had COVID. I just mm. thought I had it. Oh, okay. I had all the symptoms people had. Mm. You know, but it's crazy because this. It's crazy how shit worked. Like, I was sick as fuck that whole night. Yeah. Couldn't sleep. Yeah. My room was like on 100 degrees. I was so cold. I was shivering. I had fever. Oh. I was tripping. Yeah. I got on the plane. I had a hot flash, and it just was over with. I wasn't oh. I didn't, I wasn't sick no more. It was weird. That's like, crazy. I was sweating crazy, yeah. and boom, I was good. <laughs> so you had to work extra harder in order to really pull Oh, for that video? Off. What? Oh, man. I told them they bring to bring me some. I don't know what it was. At first, I had a headache, yeah. and I felt like I was getting house. I was like, can y'all just bring me some like Dayquil, Nyquil? Like, yeah. And it kind of like you know, lasted a little bit, put the COVID or whatever it was on hold for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But when I got back to the hotel, I felt like shit. Mm-hmm. It was over with. Mm-hmm. It was over with. Mm, that's crazy. That's deep because when you feel that. See, I don't know if I had COVID, but mm-hmm. I I really got sick and I was the weakest sore mm-hmm. i was sitting in I, I had to take a bath it was so bad mm-hmm. and i was getting nauseous sitting down mm-hmm. i'm like bro this is not the business but michael jordan flu game michael jordan flu game you pulled that off yeah you had to i had to pull you it know off. what i'm saying you yeah. pulled that off flu I game, mean, nigga. A, whole, a whole different state but you stayed committed to and it i was i gotta kiss it and i was all i was thinking about, i gotta get on this fucking plane <laughs> 
I gotta go on this plane. I gotta get on, on this plane. plane with all these people. Oh, you, I, it's just, you know, because you get on that plane, you gotta go through all the bag check. And mm-hmm. You just don't get to the plane, yeah. nigga. It's like, I already get on that motherfucker. Yeah. Whole uh, time wasting. Right, I got on that motherfucker, man. I got home, man. I got my ass home. <laughs> I got home, man. Shout out to that. Make sure y'all tap into that video. December, you would also work with Grammy nominated Eric Bellinger. Post a video in the studio, but it's muted. We can't hear it. Oh, yeah, that song's crazy. So, yeah. Eric Bellinger, man. What yeah. is it like to be in the in, in, in the same room as Eric it's Bellinger? It's just everything they say is true. That nigga's a legend. That nigga, yeah. It's like when the nigga's like, you hear it? It's only been one nigga that, that, can, that I've been around that when they sing, it's like, damn, nigga, you can sing. Yeah. And that's my brother Damo who taught me yeah. dinner and everything. You feel yeah. me? So, shout out to Damo. But, yeah. yeah, I heard Eric. I was like, God damn. Like, yeah. nigga's amazing. Yeah. Talented, man. Pink game crazy. Yeah. Eric it was, it was a, crazy. That was a nigga that was like, oh yeah, yeah. I gotta be around him more, man. It, so. Now, okay, so y'all made some music. Y'all made one song. We made, he hopped on one of my songs. Okay. And then it made Not it. out yet. Not out yet. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so what you have in that, you know what I'm saying? Being with Ellie, I mean, the people that you get to work with, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, not only that, though, uh, because when on January in January 2022 you would drop the Uncommon EP like we talked about Blue Bucks, Dino K Camp, Demar Jackson, produced by Grammy nominated duo, you know what I'm saying, Knees and Louis G the Wizard, who produced for J Cole, Ray Shermer, Kaz, then also Travis Marsh who's produced for Drake, French Montana, Tiana Taylor. Um, I want to ask you coming from dropping a, a, a project independent with green light to dropping the project uncommon with red bull what are some of the differences that you noticed from the way that the process was or even the outcome because you got people that drop indie and and that's kind of all they know but you would actually drop both so mm-hmm. what's some of the differences you noticed i mean number one it's you can't just drop it when you want you need release dates mm-hmm. um Shit gotta be clear. Mm-hmm. It, does that get like irritating? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got like my first kind of gesto in it. Uh, one of the songs I had to like, we had to recreate it because they didn't clear it. Oh right. Okay. But it still came out good. Um, I mean, you get a backing, you get funding, you get uh, what's it, uh, uh, marketing. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, on, on, when I dropped Green, like, we was all hands on, you know, with the woo, do, do. But then, so I just sat back. I, I did what I had to do, did my music with the woo, and they took care of everything, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Of, of course, you would put the song Free Corey C on there at mm-hmm. the end of the project, uh, Free CC. Have you been able to to even be in contact with Oh, yeah, that's like one of He's yeah. about to drop a project, matter of fact. I just did yeah. a song on there, uh, yeah. Shit Crazy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's supposed to be dropping in, in, in a week or two, something like that. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. You want to look oh, up shout out to Corey Bo, C. Yeah. Yeah. I interviewed Corey C sometime last year. And it was funny because I had interviewed T. Doe, and T. Doe was talking about the stuff he was going through. Corey C was like, bro, hey, wait. We didn't talk about my pain. We didn't talk. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I thought we did. It mm-hmm. was, that was a funny situation, but free my guy, Corey C. Um, now, April 3rd was your first time performing at a festival yeah. in North Carolina. Uh, you had a 15-minute set from 120 to 135, followed by Kaz, T-Pain, J. Cole, A. June, Wiz Khalifa. Um, when you were at that festival, what's some of the differences you noticed from just being at like a regular show compared to being at a festival? It's different vibes. Mm-hmm. You can go to the show because they fuck with this particular sound. Mm-hmm. Festivals is people like all kind of music, man. Mm-hmm. It's a lot going on. A lot of people, and it's very fun. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I was on, I was in the situation where I performed. Like, pe- people, some people didn't know who I was, some people did. But after the show, like when I from my last song, mm-hmm. everybody was rocking, nigga, man. So mm-hmm. we felt very accomplished that day. Mm-hmm. Um, but now nah, it was very fun, man. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I did love I, it. Are you looking forward to any more festivals? Hell you never yeah. Got, got any word about any more? Oh uh, yeah, uh, my my agency looking on some shit right now. So. Okay. For sure, but nah, mm-hmm. my first festival was very yeah. successful. I love that shit for well, sure. Well, that's what's up. Shout out to that. Now, you get a Timberland shout out. You know what I'm saying? Legendary Timberland. Bro. Yeah. Um, when you get that shout out, what was going on? What happened? Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. I hear this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, again, humbling. It was very humbling. It was very, like, whoa, like, another a legend type thing. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So. That shit had me, all, all of us, like, off for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that was crazy. Shout out Timbo, for real, man. Yeah, man. Shout out Timbo. Um, make sure y'all tap in with everything. 
My boy Kyle Banks got going on. I'm sure you got a plan for 2022. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Can't it. wait to hear you the music it. that's coming. Um, and hey, straight like that. You know what I'm saying? My boy Kyle Banks. Yes, Kyle Banks, sir. LA. Make sure y'all tap in.